talk about the rest of the semester. I'm going to put up, ideally, this were a perfect world, what I would want happen. In other words, what I had planned that would happen. And then we're going to talk about how that is going to be very difficult to achieve. And so we're going to look for plan B. So that's sort of the thought, to look to see what we can do for the rest of the semester. And don't get me wrong, I, I you know, plans are just plans, you know. There's some courses I teach every semester, and I've taught every semester since I started working here. And those courses, you get down to where you know how much you're going to cover, and, you know, I, I did my experimenting six years ago, eight years ago, ten years ago, whatever. And so I know, like, what's going to be in them and what's going to contain. But this class I don't teach real often, all right? And as a result, um, it's a little harder. You know, I teach it once a year, perhaps. Sometimes I teach independent study versions of it. So it's, I don't teach it as often. So each class really is sort of an individual experience. So it's not like um, I feel bad that we didn't, go with the plan, not that in the least. I think we've covered some really great material, and sometimes covering less material but being more thorough with it is better than covering more material and being shallow with it. So that being said, in an ideal world, we would have, and you're going to see really quickly why I'm saying this is in an ideal world, we would have three more assignments. And I know. You're not violent people. But seeing you guys outside the classroom kind of gave me a taste of what it might be like if I went ahead and says, okay, we're going to have three more. Yeah, you know, we might be getting into angry mob, sort of. And I don't want that to happen, for your sake or for my sake. Because there should be 15 labs at five points each. And there should be a final worth 25 points. Okay. In addition, there is definitely two more DEDL examples I would want to go over. If this is a perfect world. All right. Now, this isn't a perfect world. So I'm thinking of what we can do, all right, to do that. One thing I thought of is I thought of giving an assignment or a project instead of a final, all right? Because right now, We have had, let me make sure I'm right on the math here, we have had 12 assignments. Yes, we have not had a 13th assignment. So we have 12 assignments so far. All right, and that's 60 points, as opposed to 75 points. Now, I don't want to do this, all right? I don't want to say, okay, well then, we have a 40-point 40, 40 final. That puts the final disproportionately valuable. Right? That makes it way more valuable than the work you've done. You've all done really good hard work throughout the semester. And I don't want to make the final such that the final has that big of bearing uh, over that. Because I think that wouldn't be fair to you. All right? What's the final consistent? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. All right? 
So here's my thoughts. I'd like to get more assignments in, and I'd like to change the nature of the final to be an assignment, like a lab assignment, rather than a final final. All right? I still would like to go over the two DEDL examples. Although you might not necessarily have lab assignments relating to them. Okay? Um, we could talk about how to handle that. One way possibly to handle that is, is we could have split classes like we had before. If you wanted to go to the lecture about it, we do it. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can work on lab. We can figure something out with that or whatever. All right? So my thought is, is to get rid of the final and do two more assignments to replace the final, but one assignment is, so we'll say the final will be worth a project work worth 15 points. Okay? And here is potentially the good news. It's broken down into two parts. A plan for five points and the actual application for ten points. That will give us a total of 75 points. That will mean that the final will be slightly less weighted than it would have been under the old plan. In the old plan, the final was 25 points out of 100. Or am I doing my math wrong? It will actually, it'll be worth 15 points out of 75, so it'll actually be worth a little bit less. Under this scenario, your final will be worth 25% of your grade. Here the final is worth 20% of your grade, 15 out of 75. I don't, um, 15 and 60 is 75. But, yeah, so that's total points is 75. 75 points for the semester, and 15 of them are for, from the final. Oh, okay. So that would be 15 out of, out of 75. So that would be... But you meant we were going to have a final on top of that. No, 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 no. Okay. The final will, will be replaced by the project. Okay. All right. Now, the plan, well, just between you and I, ought to be pretty easy points. Because you don't even have to, you don't even have to do a lot. <laughs> you just say what you're going to do, and I don't want to minimize that because that really is important. But it's not the intense debugging, and it's sort of a different layer of thinking. And I think this is fair. I think this is. We have actually, including today, we have five more classes plus finals week where we don't meet, but you certainly have that week to work. All right? So three more weeks. Next week we only have meet on Tuesday. Meet Tuesday and Thursday this week. Tuesday next week. Tuesday and Thursday the following week. Uh, and I, I think this is, I think this is fair. I think this is a better way, it's a more fair way it puts more weight on the stuff that you've done in the assignments and less weight on the final, which, you know, because even if I kept the final at 25 points, that would be 25 out of 75. That would be up to a 30-year grade for the semester. So it would really put a lot of weight on the final. And I, and I don't want to do that. Is everyone okay with this? Does anyone have an issue with this? Okay, anyone else? It's going to be a project like the uh, project 
projects we've had so far. Like. Yeah. And the only difference is you get to make it up. Okay. All right. So, you know, I would expect maybe a little higher standards of polish on it, for example. So, you know, uh, I can't think of an example of, of something that you'd do, but, you know, instead of just having very plain labels, maybe you have some graphics on it. All right. Or, uh, you know, I'll describe what I want the project to contain and uh, what the plan uh, will require within the next day or so. And then that will be available for you and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I'll put this into play. I, you know, I'm winding down with my other classes as well. I'm looking to see, you know, where I'm at. And, you know, in none of my classes am I assigning three more labs. <laughs> Let's put it that way, right? So I'm not about to do it in probably the hardest class that I have, right? So therefore, that's, I think, what we're going to come up with. So essentially, beyond the stuff that's already been assigned, uh, we will have uh, a, a plan for a project where you propose it, say what you're going to do, give an outline of, of what it's going to do, and then uh, uh, actually execute it. And that will take the place of a final, which no one seems to like anyhow. All right? Okay. I do want to go over a couple more DEETL examples. And let me bring them up to, I'll bring them up to familiarize you with what they are, and then we'll start talking about one of them. Uh, when I am done covering these, I am not going to lecture anymore, and the rest of the time will simply be lab time. Okay? So, the two that I want to cover, one is the, and they're very different, one is the No, okay. probably not. I mean, that would be okay. I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, probably not. Uh, I might make lectures optional at a certain point and, and say, well, you can go in there or, or go in here. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And I'll tell you what is interesting about each of these applications, because each application that we study brings a new piece to the equation, right? Brings a new piece to the puzzle, all right? This one has the, um, adds the idea of a relational database, SQLite, okay? So what this is, is this is a, And we've seen ways of persisting data, right? The Twitter example used shared preferences, I think, to keep track of what your choices were. This is an actual relational database. And you can go into it, and I don't know if you can see, it shows a list of names here. And then when you hit plus, you can add someone. Uh, so I'm going to go through and just add. We can add someone that Tom, 444, 444, 4444, four, 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 four. Tom at Tom.com, Street, 111, Davis Street. City, Elyria, State, Ohio, zip code 44035. And when we click this little guy, it saves it. And we can, as we click on them, we bring it up. And as we click the little pen, we can edit them and save it. We can also delete someone if we want to. So 
So it's the standard database operations, uh, CRUD, CRUD, create, read, or retrieve, update, and delete. All right. I think that's it. I don't think it, anything special happens between landscape and portrait. So that's one of them that I want to look at. Here's another one that I want to look at. And the reason that that one's important is because it does databases. Will we need SQLite? What do you mean will you need SQLite? To do your project or to do No, I mean, it's, it's part of the Android's tools, okay. so you don't have to install anything special. Yeah. Uh, let's see, the Canon game. And the Canon game is different because it actually involves a canvas that you draw stuff on, which is a lot different than anything that we've done in this class. still building, I think. And oops, reset the game. You're aiming at the blue and yellow thing. The, the black thing going back and forth is an obstacle. Oh. Almost. We're going to watch me try to clear the, run the table here for the rest of the hour. You also get penalized if you if you hit the, the, the obstacle. So that's why that last game went so quick. And you get a bonus time if you hit one. things that we're going to look at and it may be difficult for me to look at every aspect of it all right so what I plan to do is talk about just certain aspects of it not to do a comprehensive thing all right and that might make it um, easier um, let's start by so I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think because I do want to cover these, but on the other hand, I'm wondering. You know, well, I'll, I'll I'll cover them after today. I'll I'll make like the rest of the lectures optional after today. All right. So I introduce these applications. Um, you can certainly look at them on your own time if you're really interested. Bring the questions to class. I will lecture on them, and I'll see if anyone wants to come to the lecture. They're welcome to. If you prefer to work, you can do that, too. All right, that way, the best of both worlds. You don't have to do either of these two functionalities in your project. So your project doesn't require using uh, a canvas and drawing on it, or it doesn't require a database. So you can skip these if you want. All right, let's spend a little bit of time looking at the address and seeing what is important about that. All right. In the address book, they actually have fragments for one, two, three, three things, three different fragments. One to add and edit. One to have the list of fragments, 
or list of contacts, and one to show the detail. Because remember, if we can identify those, all right, this is showing a list, so that's a fragment. All right. The center section get the fragments get swapped out. So I go here. I'm viewing the details fragment. So that's the context fragment. The details fragment is to show everything about the contact. The add and edit fragment is the same thing. You click on that, or you click on the thing to add and you get the same fragment, the only difference being that one you're in add mode, one you're in edit mode. But it's the same fragment, fragment that handles both. So that is our three fragments. Detail, the list, and that. Let's, look, let's start looking at the contacts fragment. Okay? And what we have is we have it's a fragment, which you should know with great detail at this point. All right. We have a recycler view, right, because this on the side is dynamic. We don't have a certain number of slots in it. We match that with an array of things, all right. So we have our recycler view. Uh, let's see. View, recycler view, we find it. We set the layout manager. We set our contacts adapter. and we give it a click listener. All right, that's all we do is we give it a click listener to handle what happens when that gets clicked. Let's look at our contacts adapter. Now this is a little bit different because Our get item count doesn't come from an array. All right. Typically, if you remember, we would pass our recycle adapters an array. All right. In this case, we're not passing an array because we have a database that the stuff is stored in. And any of these classes can access the database. So if we look here, we pass Let's see where's the constructor for this. We pass when we create this contacts adapter, we pass it a listener, a click listener, and that sets the click listener. Okay? On create view holder. All right? We create the view by inflating the single contact that we have in the layout. Simple list item one. Simple list item one is actually a built-in layout. It's not one that I define the XML for or Deedle defined it for. On bind, and public get item count and all that, on bind we actually have something called a cursor. And the cursor is a way of traversing through 
the database. So we set our cursor initially equal to null. Where do we actually read that? That would be Well, get cursor count returns how many items are in the cursor. Okay, so before we would uh, we would we would do the count of the array. We would look at the size of the array or the length of the array, uh, size of the array list. All right. In this case, a cursor. Um, think of that as a list, but a list coming from a database. Just trying to see where that gets populated. There must be an ad someplace out there. Well, it gets ad, but I'm just trying to see even where it gets where it gets read. This code is kind of written crazy. Cursor root position. Well, that's looping through. That's looping through and getting, because again, if you notice these, we have the same things that we've always seen, except we did them with arrays. The get item count, what that would do typically is it would return the account the length of the array. The bind would grab an array element and grab the values from the array element. Here we're grabbing it instead from the cursor. The inflate does the same thing. What I'm not seeing is private cursor, cursor equals null. Yeah, it might be. Let me look at the reports, the or imports. Oh, I'll bet you it gets swapped. I bet you that comes from the main activity. Okay, there we go. What is this in? This is in. Is this on the contacts fragment? Yeah, the contacts fragment does that. I was looking at the adapter. The contacts fragment, there we go, creates a cursor and gives that to the adapter. So the cursor is the data coming from the database. All right, and what we're doing is when the fragment finishes loading, it goes out, queries the database, and pulls back a cursor that it sets in the adapter. And then the adapter goes and does its thing, just like it did before, but instead of an array, it does it on a cursor. You can think of an array of uh, uh, a... a uh, can have multiple elements. 
and that you can loop through them and you can find out how many elements are in it and so on. All right? But typically it's read through the database. Yes? Is the cursor then considered to be all the data that's on the line with the cursor of what's been typed in? All the data in the database row. Right. It's essentially the position, yeah, that's where they get the idea of cursor. A cursor is a structure that you can iterate through, but typically you can only iterate through forward because you're always saying, give me the next one, give me the next one, give me the next one until you hit the very end. All right? And that's. We, well, we move to the position, which each time through is the next one. So we are going sequentially through it. The activity, we created our view, we created our adapter and all that. On finish loading, we go and We essentially create a new cursor loader that this maps to a SQL statement. All right. So these are some fancy database terms projection is which columns that we want to see. We want to see information from the contact table in our SQLite database. No here means we're going to get all columns. No here means we're going to get all rows. There's no arguments. These two go hand in hand. And then the sort order is that we sort by this column name and we collate irrespective of case in ascending order. So essentially, if we were going to write the SQL statement for this, this would be select star from contacts, uh, order by column name, whatever is that, that is in there, uh, ascending. Yeah. And once you know how the database is set up, how would you read it? Well, you do know how the database is set up. That's defined, it's actually defined in these three classes. For example, right here is a create statement that creates it. You'd create one of these. There's actually three classes here. There's a database description that defines the structure of the database that you're going to have. All right. Uh, this essentially says the package that the database is part of. Uh, this is a URL or URI actually so that we can pull the correct database from this because an application could potentially have multiple databases. Table name, set up the URI for the table name. We define the co uh, columns, and then we go and build that. We also have a database helper that does some of the low-level functioning in SQL, like, for example, to create the tables or, yeah, to create the database. We also have a method to migrate the database. Let's say, for example, we wanted to, between version 1 and version 2 of our application, we added a new table. All right? You wouldn't want to destroy the database and recreate it every time you run the application. All right? That'd be horrible. Someone had a million contacts in, and they get an upgrade of the application, so it, it drops the contacts table and recreates it. All right? 
But you might want to make database changes. You might want to add columns to the, uh, the uh, contacts table. You might want to introduce another table. So what this method does, this is when it's initially created. What this says is this shows you the old version and the new version. And you can actually have code in here that says if you're going from version 1 to version 2 of the application, make these changes. If you're going from version 1 to version 3, make these changes and these changes, and so on. So you can actually put sort of the migration path of the stuff that you're going to add to the databases in here. Uh, I'm going to end here today. I'm a little concerned that um, without taking a lot of time, we're not going to understand these really well. So I'm really torn if I even want to talk about them or not. So I'll ponder that between now and now and Thursday. All right, uh, and decide. You know, maybe I'll have the lecture, you know, probably we'll do something for a few days, have optional lectures. You can work or you can come to the lecture, and either way is okay. That's probably what I'll do. So assume that unless you hear otherwise. Are you going to, you're going to record the last few lectures? Yeah, sure. Right, Mike? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just, they'll be on YouTube anyways. Like yeah. If yeah, if you want to view it later on. Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, let's wrap up here. Uh, let's head to lab if you have any questions. Uh...